Hello guys, welcome to Screencast on Regulation of Heart Rate uh, via Intrinsic Control. Now, if you remember last lesson, uh, we had a look at uh, two other mechanisms by which you can uh, regulate heart rate. They were um, neural control as our first one. So if you remember, neural control had a direct translation into receptors. And particularly, we were looking at the role of three receptors. Okay, three receptors, what they detected where they sent the information, and then which nervous system, which nerve they stimulated to then stimulate the SA node, depending upon exercise or recovery. Now, we also had a look at the end of the lesson at um, hormonal control. Okay, so hormonal, if you remember, was directly linked to the specific hormone of adrenaline. Okay, so we looked at adrenaline, and its effect on the SA node. So adrenaline obviously would stimulate the SA node, which would lead to an increase in heart rate, which can often, well, can, can happen before exercise by the anticipatory rise depicted in our heart rate graph. Now, today's lesson then, we're looking at this kind of key focus of intrinsic control. So intrinsic control then is really important because not only does intrinsic control um, regulate heart rate, it also has a big impact on stroke volume and cardiac output, which we'll look at in future lessons. So if we have a quick look at this now and say, right, so neural, hormonal, intrinsic, we've all got, we've got the, the key translation here for this one, okay, we've also got um, adrenaline as our translation there, so what we need to look at now is to we'll have a quick look at um, the, the translation here, which is venous return, okay, so venous return, this is the key thing that will help our answer when talking about intrinsic control. What is venous return then? So venous return, as it kind of says here, is the blood returns to the heart following exercise. So if we go on to this next bit now, I can kind of put this into a visual for you. Not, I'm not going to go through this as a kind of um, whole diagram. All I'm going to do now is say, right, if this is the body here and you've just exercised, what happens is you use all the oxygen up here, okay, so the blood becomes deoxygenated there, so deoxygenated, and basically what happens is that blood then goes back to the heart. So this period here, or this process here, is called venous return. So during exercise then, the blood that's returned to the heart is called venous return. And what happens if you're on exercise particularly, there is an increase in venous return. So what I'll say now is I'm just gonna talk through this kind of, uh, show it visually. Um, you do not have to make notes at this point, just listen. And on the next slide, I'll put it step by step where you can actually see the process of venous return and how it kind of impacts heart rate. So what we're looking at, um, first step, what happens to venous return during exercise? Well, there's an increase in it. What does this mean then? Well, there's an increase in blood back to the right atrium. Okay, so what happens then, because there's an increase in blood into the right atrium, the ventricle walls stretch. Okay, now these ventricle walls stretch, there's an increase in blood in the right atrium, and there's also an increase in kind of uh, pressure there. What this does is it impacts, or it kind of increases the firing rate of the SA node, which we looked at in the conduction system. So it increases the firing rate of the SA node, which will then increase heart rate. Now, that's me just talking through it. Um, what I need you to do now is kind of, hopefully that made sense, and kind of there's more blood going back into here. Okay, that means to an increase in the stretch of the atria walls. This increases the firing rate of the SA node, and that then will lead to an increase in heart rate. So what we'll do then, I'll put this onto the see it uh, written down. How would you answer a question on this? You can stop here, but these are the key notes you will need. Intrinsic control returns to venous return. What happens during exercise when well, uh, venous return is increased? Then we look at this concept of the right atrium stretching. Then we have a, uh, an increase, oh sorry, atria uh, wall stretch will come down here, whichever one. And that then directly leads to an increase in the firing rate of the SA node. So the SA node there. And that then, of course, leads to an increase in heart rate. So there are your keynotes, hopefully that makes sense. If you look down here in future lessons, you'll be looking onto this. So you've basically got this process here. That the, the, If you have an increase in heart rate, that means that more blood will come down into the ventricles. Um, 
This will then lead to a ventricle stretch increasing because the more blood going down, the ventricles are forced downwards. And then because they're forced downwards, this will then lead to an increase in the contractility of the ventricles, which then leads to an increase in blood ejected from the heart per beat per minute, which is stroke volume and cardiac output. Now that's something we'll look at next lesson, which will be the lesson after when we look at stroke volume um, changes. So if I could just say now, um, your key focus is to say from this point, um, just make notes on that first section. 